The Arteon is perhaps the most elegant commercial Volkswagen to date. Its elongated contours and long wheelbase lend a look of exclusivity, which, thanks to its aerodynamics, is not at the expense of its sporty character. Back in the early 2000s, there was a trend. When the CLS came out, it became more of a thing for everybody to create a coupe-like sedan. I don't know what that trend was about, but Volkswagen made sure that they was going to cash in on that. What's up, guys? My name is Chris, and welcome to The Breakdown, where we talk about everything cars, news, and reviews. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So just last week, I asked you guys what you wanted to hear in regards to sedans that didn't exactly do that well, and the Arteon outpaced both the Accord and the Malibu. Now, still, I'm going to do those videos, and if they drop, they more than likely will be on my Patreon, which I will leave a link in the description below. But it almost is a, a thing to reminisce, especially with the X6 and things like the CLS. But the Volkswagen Arteon was none of those things as it was supposed to be the answer to the mass market coupe-like sedan. I don't know, we had a fascination with that, but the Arteon for Volkswagen was a very low volume, but highly styled and highly regarded car amongst journalists, but never amongst the masses. And so I wanted to do a deep dive or a moderate deep dive into why the Arteon did not sell. And in this video, we will explore what the Arteon is, what it is not, and what it could have been. So with that being said, stick around and stay tuned because you are now watching The Breakdown. Back in the early 2000s, there was a trend and the trend was we decided we didn't like things as they were so we wanted to change the status quo and modify them because of that we decided we didn't like sedans anymore and we wanted to change them modify them make them magnificent and thus we came up with four-door coupes. Four-door coupes were a trend for at least 15 years, with the most notable one being the CLS. But at one point or another, Volkswagen decided that they were going to get in on that same trend and create the CC. Brother, ugh. what's that? Back in 2008, the Volkswagen CC made its debut and it was a hit amongst us enthusiasts, not quite a hit amongst everybody else. The CC didn't do that well here in the States, but it did well in Europe. How so and ever, the CC ended up discontinuing its life roughly around 2017 and Volkswagen had a different answer to that car. And that was the Arteon. One of the big complaints about the CC was that it was rough riding, not well formulated, and it also came out around the time when the housing crisis happened, which we all know cut a lot cost. Fast forward into 2017 and the Volkswagen CC would cease production and Volkswagen decided that they were going to give a little more reinvigoration to this lineup as sedans had slowly been declining as demand for SUVs had steadily gone up and around 2015 the sports concept the sports coupe concept GTE would debut and give us a little hint of what we could expect right after the cease of production of the CC and thus came the Arteon. Brand designer boss Klaus Bischoff Y'all know I can't say names right, but brand designer Klaus Bischoff, designer at Volkswagen when the when the sports coupe concept initially debuted, he described it as a new design era for Volkswagen. And keep in mind, this was a different time for Volkswagen as they had just kind of escaped the shame and scarlet letter of <laughs> the scandal of Dieselgate. And so because of that, they had to make a name for themselves as a premier but premium German brand that was doing it the right way. And so in order to appease both the sedan and SUV people, as well the enthusiasts they gave a variety of options being one of the world's most prevalent automakers they decided that why not why not put out a sedan that nobody's gonna buy we don't care because we're that girl now what the Volkswagen Arteon was supposed to be at its debut it was supposed to be a replacement for two cars those two cars being the CC and the Passat the Passat for a long time had been well preserved but steadily aging whereas the CC was kind of a flop for the US market as opposed to the European market and in most cases we all know what companies do they consolidate and they cost cut and that is the result of the Arteon now the Arteon at its debut came out with a 268 horsepower 2 liter turbocharged engine which which basically went 0 to 60 roughly around mid 5 mid 6 seconds and so at its time it debuted with both front wheel drive and all wheel drive and in its peak it was supposed to be a premium style four door coupe the problem with four door coupes is is that you are trying to force one thing into another the 
reason why coupes were fun in their earlier heydays is because there was two doors. And no matter how you style them, no matter how you try to change them, a four door coupe will always be sleek to a smaller market as opposed to a sedan and a coupe. But I'm pretty sure the people at Volkswagen knew this. The term Arteon is supposed to be resonant of a Latin term, Artem, which is basically art. Now, when you initially see the design of this car, it is art. It is absolutely stunning and gives a very Audi-like feel. And I'm gonna get into that in a minute because that plays into a role of what the Arteon was not. And the Arteon, even though it was a four-door coupe, it was not a sports car. It gave sports car elements, but it was not a sports car. In its first two years, it sold a mere 6,000 units. Now, in this particular market, the four-door coupe sedan market has always been a low volume seller to the same degree of things such as the X6 and the ZDX because most people just have a really tough time getting in and out of those cars especially with the roof line which is partly why the cc did not sell that well but that's not really where i'm going with this y'all bear with me <laughs> <laughs> One of the biggest problems with the Arteon as opposed to many of the other cars that were out there was that it was not properly configured. So Volkswagen uses their MQB architecture, which is basically their modular system where they can pop and pop off cars like wigs. With that, you typically have to have a dedicated platform that gears a lot of the drivetrain in a particular way. What am I getting at? It was front wheel drive. Now the Volkswagen Arteon did come as an all wheel drive option but as many of the systems of today for the sake of efficiency a lot of those drivetrains are front wheel drive bias however a lot of the rtn's competitors were not front wheel drive they were rear wheel drive or rear wheel drive biased and so that is one of the biggest problems that happened with the rtn because a lot of customers simply could not justify getting a front wheel drive bias platform when there were many other other competitors that offered a rear wheel drive platform that was much more engaging to drive now from a lot of journalists they said that the rtn especially after its refresh around 2022 there was a the Arteon was a pleasure to drive, especially if you got the SEL R-Line trim. Now, the R-Line trim is supposed to be the more adult version, and they bumped up a lot of the horsepower from 268 to 300 horsepower, coming from the seven-speed dual-clutch transmission from the Golf R. But the real problem that came in is, is that the price of the Arteon is where a lot of the other issues happen. Now, hear me out. Most consumers did not find it ideal to pay for a $50,000 Volkswagen. Brand perception is a huge, huge problem in the car community because in a lot of cases, we associate brand perception with performance and performance is a big deal for us. Now for the mass market, they don't care whether it's front wheel drive, one wheel drive or eight wheel drive, as long as it gets them from point A to point B. But being that this is a niche car, it was incredibly difficult for Volkswagen to market this to the proper people. And the thing is, is that many of the dealerships at the time did not want to give or sell a Volkswagen Arteon simply because they didn't think or know how to. Quiet as this kept, the Volkswagen Arteon was a decent car, but the price as well as the front wheel drive bias platform was just too close contact for a lot of people to really justify and understand. Now, what Volkswagen marketed this car as it was supposed to be their halo car. And this was supposed to be a point where Volkswagen could rival a lot of German competitors as well as point where Volkswagen could market their car as their halo car to be able to compete with other cars in that arena. One of the cars that are closely competitive to it is Audi where the A5 Sportback was supposed to be a competitor. Aside from the idea that it was $50,000, the liftback design was a little controversial but really effective and practical. Now what it is, it is a premium car for Volkswagen and it's supposed to be an upper echelon but there were very little to no incentives on the Volkswagen Arteon and so because of that it made it incredibly difficult and complex to sell this car <sighs> okay so giving my opinion what really happened was was that Volkswagen did not understand that they could not market a really expensive car with a really cheap platform that's not how that works and Volkswagen has come out with some amazing front wheel drive cars my personal favorite being the Golf R as well as the GTI and that's just the enthusiast in me but the Jetta especially with the 1.4 was relatively decent 
these Volkswagen has been doing sedans for literally decades and they know how to do it how so and ever this Arteon was a misstep because the four-door sedan while stylishly aesthetically pleasing and it was aesthetically pleasing it was not realistic and that's really where the fatal flaw came from the expectations of this car was kind of out of reach and a bit delusional <laughs> The idea that a $50,000 Volkswagen is the same concept as saying, oh, we're gonna spend $50,000 on a Toyota. The two just do not equate, especially if it's supposed to be the people's car. The truth is, is that Volkswagen in terms of electrification and SUVs really have moved the target into what they believe is going to be the more superior product. And unfortunately, this was a last cash grab at the four door sedan. I'm not gonna hold y'all. I would have considered one, but feel like because of the competitors that were out there, that's what made it that much more difficult to justify the purchase of a $40,000 to $50,000 Volkswagen, especially considering the maintenance on German cars is absolutely absurd. Now, the good thing is, before I let y'all go, the mechanicals, apparently there are very few problems with these cars. And if you're in the market for one, if you can find one, they are still giving roughly around 4.9% with Volkswagen credit if you so choose to do so. But the argument is, is that if you are looking for something that is really sleek and stylish, but you want performance, then the Volkswagen Golf R, while it is tempting, there are better competitors out there. And so if you are considering that, just remember that this is not the car that is not going to blow your socks off but it is going to give you a lot of creature comforts for a great value with that being said leave me a comment below and let me know what you think about the rtn if you think it should have done better or do you think that volkswagen was right for scrapping it and until the next video of course i will see you guys later